Yo, uh, is my fan on? Can you hear me? Let's 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 assume you can, because you know what's deleting another video. Um, so I was talking. I've been doing some yard work, that's why I look a mess, and this video is kind of impromptu. Uh, so I apologize for that. But uh, I was talking with Michael um, at a Nellytics, spelt with Nelly, I guess, um, on Twitter about Terrence Marshall versus Devontae Smith. And I've made a video about both, and I just did a video for DLF saying why they were two of the players in the top 12 of current ranks that I have more concern with, well, or Marshall was. And he was doing side-by-side -side comparisons in their market share, and at the time I was pulling a lawnmower up a hill. And uh, anyway, I, I, so I couldn't really respond, and I thought about, usually I get in the DMs and I'll filter a spreadsheet, but my family wants to go get a pizza, and I don't, I, maybe I'm just getting old, I just did, I don't have the time. I thought, thought maybe a video would be okay, um, take a while to upload, but I'm, I'm getting back to you, Michael, I swear. Um, so why don't I like Marshall, but I kind of like Devontae Smith video. So Smith versus Marshall, I guess, um, is the video uh, title, presumably. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do that. Um, now, to start off, I will say I like Devontae Smith in the way I like fast food. It's good. It's nice. Uh, I like it. I'll eat it. I'm not ashamed to say it. I've tried to cut down it in recent years because I'm getting older and all the damage I've done to myself is uh, starting to show up. Uh, so I need to eat a little bit better. But yeah, it's good food. I, I don't think anyone's doing it. Well, some people don't like it. This metaphor is breaking down, but I like him. He has a decent profile in this class, which is something we'll get to talk about tonight. I, I don't think it's a particularly strong class. Um, but that doesn't mean there aren't good players in it. Um, and adjusting to the f things I've learned over the year, I know the good players don't all come with picture-perfect profiles. Like, actually, Nikhil, that's one of the things I look at Nikhil Harry and like, you know, sometimes perfect just ain't perfect. Um, so just in context, I, I like Smith over Marshall. I'm not saying I'd take Smith over anyone in 2020 the 2020 class uh, that I really liked to put it in context I think he's good I think he was really good last year as mo I think most people have proven um you know I just realized my volume was low last video and I was gonna up it and uh now I've forgotten to uh, anyway let's turn the background music down anyway so yeah all in context yeah I like Smith over Marshall but I'm not saying world beater I'm saying he has positive signs on his profile he's decent um it's a decent profile not so all in context. Anyway, so why don't I like Marshall, but I do like Smith, even though, as Michael was doing a side-by-side -side comparison, these numbers look similar. And well, part of it, that is, is that it's not about the similarity of numbers. I know this This is a drastic nastiness of thresholds. Like, they're, they're pretty close, yeah, but one's over and one's under. And that's night, day. Night, day, dark, light, yes, no. Um, so that's part of it. Um, that one crosses and one doesn't is literally the definition of being good or bad compared to past prospects when you're using that threshold market share analysis. But that's not it because I do have to dig a little deeper. And again, I hate doing every video impromptu and I like I can't do a full in-depth rookie breakdown. But I guess that's why articles exist. Sometimes you just got to article it out, you know. But um, let, let, me, let me show you a, something at least to explain why Marshall looks to me like a good college player and Smith looks to me like he could potentially be a decent, not being able to measure ceilings using this stuff, like it doesn't rank, but he could translate to the NFL, whereas Marshall looks like he won't, like a good po college player who won't. But get get stuff wrong all the time. If you like Marshall, I'm not trying to convince anyone and everything. I'm trying to offer an opinion and trying to help out with building your own i guess but like never supplant your opinion with mine just be real clear um that's my personal take on it anyway um so yeah let me show you like a spreadsheet and stuff okay so this is uh this is actually michael's tweet where he's doing the market share comparison and again it's just it's, it's a bit of a threshold man one's over one's uh, one's not um, in those last two years. So let me do some brief description. One thing that you might be looking for, like why don't I like one over the other? Ah, crap. Uh, let me hide this stuff. 
There we go. Is uh, market share receiving yards is a good threshold indicator and breaking it down can tell you a lot about players, but don't just look at one player one time. Again, um, and he's specifically thinking about dominator rating where Marshall broke out at 20 years old over a 30% threshold and Devontae Smith took till 21. I think that's why a lot of nerds actually counter me with, I actually like uh, Trevor Marshall. It's because he's got this age 30% breakout, but I, I think the other thing that the 30% threshold can do is leave out some of that context. That's why breakout age is a good indicator, but you really have to dig in. So if you go back to the overall breakout ages, you do see that, uh, all the just the uh, hit rates, you'll see that based on conference and where they're coming from, the hit rate from those conferences, Marshall actually technically wins out just using those breakout ages. And it's specifically because he broke out at 20 at 30% threshold and Smith took to uh, 21 to hit that 30% threshold. But... We're essentially already saying that his first two years, Smith's first two years, were markedly terrible. And now I'm not going to make teammate adjustments because I don't find that useful. But I do know that when he finally earned his way into the gig and it took a little bit longer, he was above average pretty much both of those years across the market share stats. Some graphs you can make, he's right on the line. Some he's just over it, but it's good enough. And in the last year, he's significantly over it. Whereas Marshall is below slightly on every graph I've made, at least, comparing him to past players that have been good in the NFL. But let's just say they were both okay that year. Um, and then their final year, Smith is over and Marshall is not. But he does cross that 30, in market share receiving yards. But he does cross the dominator threshold. But the dominator threshold is based heavily on, well, it's based 50% on, because they're, they're weighted equally, um, in touchdowns. And the reason you see that uh, Marshall crosses that threshold is because of the 40% touchdown threshold. Yeah. He gets 40% of that dominator rating specifically from uh, touchdowns. And again, touchdowns are just, just just a nastier stat to be good at. Yes, Devontae Smith also got 50% of his uh, dominator rating from touchdowns, but he also got that 28% of receiving yards crossing the 20% threshold um, the year before. And so weighing both of that together, I kind of prefer the way that Smith broke out versus compared to Marshall. And then when you go back to the Michael Shiver receiving yards in that in that final year, you see that uh, Smith also had a larger share of receiving yards, 39% in his final year, which was 2020, so it's all a little weird, compared to Marshall's 23. So, yes, yeah, Smith has a worrying touchdown percentage in this final year, but he has a great receiving yards percentage that final year, and Marshall has a 23% share of market share receiving yards, which is why he looks so drastically below the average on my market share receiving graph. So, Mar Smith has issues and you kind of have to read it a little bit but it is there and then when you dig into Marshall's profile which has a slightly better number in terms of that 30% breakout threshold it looks to be what I would call fake if I was memeing or twittering or this was a real video that I'd set up to be funny and make jokes about I'd say there's a fake number or something um, I, but again this is a good college career I'm not saying Marshall wasn't good and um, but we literally just saw players come from this conference uh, from this from this school, isn't it? Uh, that were good, and they, they they did a lot more than that. And the other way you could profile it just simply is by saying players that are last year breakouts, because that's what Terrence Marshall did. He broke out finally across any threshold in his final year, and that's true of a few other prospects in the past too. And the ones that do it break up way over that thirty percent threshold. It's not whatever he got. Um, Overall, that 32%, it's actually over 40%. In the few examples of good players that played later careers and um, that were then good in the NFL, I'm thinking Brandon Marshall. Uh, AJ Green had two solid years before he went to the NFL. But there are a few examples that is a possible path to Terrence Marshall having a good profile, if you if you like him. Um, but they easily cross that 30% threshold when they finally do break out. They go way over 40 like 45, 50% dominator ratings. And Marshall crosses a 30% threshold, which is what makes that basic indicator look good, but he's nowhere near the heights of production for players who waited until their last year to do it. Smith played four years. I think it's just discardable uh, in general because we see four years players do break out and everything else on Smith's profile, when you do dig into it a little bit, looks fairly decent. Um, but again, that's how I go with market share, and that's what's... Uh, Michael was specifically asking about, but I also think this shows up in their ancillary or their other stats that are very useful as well. Like this is uh, the yards per team pass attempt. Like you can see that Marshall never really hit the heights 
of top 24 players, which is actually running across the top area. 18 players with top 24 seasons average around 1.9. And again, it's an average, so yeah, take it for what it's worth. But when it fits together with the rest of the narrative, it, that's, it fits. It makes sense. That's what you would expect to see from a good college player who didn't really do as well as past players that have elevated for the next level. And that top 24 is just a round number, so it includes a lot of players who have bad production or played running back and quarterback. I, I haven't ciphered to a good sample to get that average and so it's actually dragged down quite a l little bit and Devontae Smith is below that but it's a lot closer to it and he easily tops the heights uh, with a 3.1 yards per team pass attempt and a 4.4 yards per team pass attempt in his final two years and again this year 2020 specifically has elevated yards per team pass attempt on the prospects I've actually managed to dig into sufficiently and so it's a little suspect but then it's a little even more suspect that you know, at 20 years old, Marshall just creeps over the average of top 24 players in a year that in most college stats seem to be inflated in terms of that blend of role and efficiency that most at least good rumored to get draft capital players that have broken down seem to have. And so 4.4 versus 2.5, it's worse. And 3.1 is worse than a lot better than 1.5. And even when you go by the ages they were playing, Smith is markedly better and better a better comparison to past prospects that were good so when i break it all down using yards per team pass attempt taking into context of when they broke out and looking at the point of their career they broke out and the possible comparables and in, in past examples of good players marshall just looks like a really good college player and again he could be good in the nfl what the frick do i know but that's what he looks like to me when you dig in and add extra context he's below the threshold not above it when you go back and look at possible late breakout candidates that broke out only in their last year over that 30 or 20% threshold, he didn't really dominate as much as those guys who went on to be well. And it was still heavily based on touchdowns in 2020. So I, I struggle to find the positive comparisons even to later breakout players or late last year breakout players in the sample of good players in the past. And Devontae Smith... Re compares really well in his last two seasons to past prospects. Am I worried that it's only those last two seasons? Yeah, I am. I I'm a little worried. And, and again, with 2020, like there's probably a game adjustment that people are making for one or two of these players. I think Marshall only played, you know, uh, some of the season. And I think that's why some of his market share stats look low. But again, you if you've watched any of my videos, you kind of know what I do with that. Like there are no players that we can find examples for that missed enough time so we per game it and then they hit like there's no one that needs a per game adjustment and that's a little harsh to Marcel which is again one of the many ways I could be misreading it but without a past example of it being relevant yeah he only played seven games last year I get it he could have been a lot better last year but he won't and he waited till his last year and players that wait till the last year the few who have that big breakout their final year there are very very few that are just late breakout players like relatively few to like the 85 sample we we're using yesterday or whatever else and they 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 blow that 30 percent threshold out the water they don't just cross it and they don't just cross it mostly because of touchdowns and so smith in his last two years compares well to past prospects when you try to read through it and find context and consider the year he was playing the age he was playing at and and marshall doesn't um, to my eyes, that's what I see. And, and again, side by side comparison of numbers isn't always going to do that for you. Because um, again, thresholds are a, be a bitch, right? Um, over is good, under is bad. And that can seem uh, really tough. I mean, I know, I feel it. Corey Davis just missed being a breakout in the NFL twice now, just outside of the top 24. I kind of want to rope him in. Uh, and again, thresholds are only so good. Um, which is why I try to take a slightly deeper look at the profile as and when I can with my mediocre brain and knowledge of statistics. That's what comes out. And again, if you feel differently, don't let me convince you, but that is my reasoning and why I kind of like Smith. He looks okay in those last two years. And I don't, don't really see it with Marshall, but, you know, all power to you, man. Um, I, I, I got a lot of misses on my history, and you should go in you should be willing to miss that's the only way to play rookie dress as far as i can tell if you're not willing to miss just trade the hell out and if marshall's your guy go get marshall and um, smith isn't my guy but i definitely think he's like a decent prospect and the draft is going to tell me a lot more about their potential chances of hitting in the nfl so 
there we are. Um, hopefully that answered some of your questions, Michael, on how I dug through those market share numbers are slightly different than that side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, I hope it does. Anyway, and if not, hit me up again, I guess. Next time I won't be pull pulling a little more up a hill, I hope, and uh, I'll try and do more. All right. Um, all right. That's 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 it. Sub, sub to YouTube, I guess. A any particular, no particular YouTube, just sub to a YouTube because it's fun, I guess. And the little the little icon changes color. It's great. It's great. You should try it. Not here. Check out DLS page or Michael's. I I don't care. Um, I care. I care. That that came out wrong. I'm just gonna go. Okay. Uh, see you later. Bye. Uh -huh.